morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are studying joy this week as a fruit of the Holy Spirit and a spiritual force that comes from God. It is birthed in your spirit when you are born again. And so we, we are looking at causes for joy or reasons for joy. And we've already mentioned that we we, we are joyful because of our salvation and the benefits of salvation. We have also said that we are joyful because when we are thankful, thankfulness and praise, let me say it that way, are causes and producers of joy, thankfulness and praise. And then we talked about our main cause for joy is God himself. God himself is the reason for our joy. He is the source and cause. God is the source and cause for our joy. And yesterday and the day before, we named one of the names of God is found in Psalm 43, 4. Psalm 43, 4. And it says, Then will I go to the altar of God, to God, my joy and my delight. And that right there in the Hebrew text, God, my joy and my delight is one of the names of God. Now, this is in the NIV. It says, God, my joy and my delight. The King James says, God, my exceeding joy. And the Young's literal translation says, the joy of my rejoicing. The joy of my rejoicing. And the Hebrew name is El Simcha Gili. El Simcha Gili. One of the names of God. Now I hope I'm saying that right, but I'm trying to copy the phonetic pronunciation that is given in the dictionary. But sometimes it's just hard to say those Hebrew words if you are not a Hebrew speaker. So I think it sounds something like that. But El Simcha Gili, one of the names of God, is God, my joy and my delight, God, my exceeding joy, God, the joy of my rejoicing. So we are to rejoice in the Lord. Praise the Lord. And again, I want to say what I've said in the last couple of days, that joy is evidence of faith and it is evidence of thankfulness because thankfulness is evidence of faith. Also, thankfulness is an act of faith. Sometimes you, you are actually we are thankful before we see it. That's what we were talking about yesterday. The God kind of faith you believe you ask and then you believe that you are receiving. And so you rejoice. So you are thankful. So you praise the Lord. You praise God for what you are believing for before you see it. So joy and thankfulness are evidence that you are in faith and that you are believing God. Sadness is evidence that you are in unbelief, that you don't believe the promises of God. And sadness is then also evidence that you are unthankful. So thankfulness and praise are part of one of your spiritual weapons against the enemy to overcome the enemy. And we did a, a short series on that called The Power of Praise. And if you missed that, I encourage you to go to my website at www.victoriousfaith, that's V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S-F-A-I-T-H dot C-O, C-O like Colorado. Go to the radio broadcast archives. You will go back to the series called The Power of Praise, and you will get the teaching on how to use, and actually at that time I was going through different spiritual weapons such as the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and praise. Those are four of your main 
spiritual weapons against the enemy to overcome. And so you can study that again. If you missed it, go to the radio broadcast archives and they're available to you 24 hours a day. Now, let me go forward and keep going about the causes for our joy. And this follows with God himself is the source and cause of our joy. We joy in him. We joy in him because of who he is, what he is. Hallelujah. And then we joy in God's works. God's works. The works of God. Psalm 92 verse 4. 92 4. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. So notice, I am glad because of the deeds of the Lord. And I sing for joy at the works of his hands. Let me read it to you again. Psalm 92, 4. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. And then Psalm 107, 107, 22 says, Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Tell of his works with songs of joy. Have you read the book of Psalms? If not, you need to. But when you go through the book of Psalms, you will read the praises and many of those praises. Now, some of them are prayers. Some of the Psalms are prayers. Some are petitions. But others are praises. And if you look at those Psalms that are praises, you will see that they are praises for the things God did for them, what God did for the people of Israel, how he defeated their enemies, how he defeated Egypt and Pharaoh and drowned his army in the in the sea and how they just go through praising the Lord for all the works that God has done. And so that's a good place for you to start is to remember what God has done. You know, actually in the Bible, God instructed Israel to build memorials in different places. He also told Abraham, or Abraham chose uh, to do it, I believe, by God's direction. They would build a memorial. It was a remembrance. It It would sometimes just be a pile of stones, But it was set up to be a memorial, to be a marker, to remind them of what God did there in that place. And they did that in different places where they won battles. Even in the middle of the sea, God said, set up a pile of stones and it's a marker. I mean, who's ever going to see it on the bottom of the sea? Except it was a marker for God parting the sea. And so they were instructed by God to set up markers or memorials in places where God gave them a victory. You should do that also. We all should. We need to keep a list even that marks the victories that God has given to us so that we can remember what God has done and then look at that list Again and again in the future as you go through life and remember the things God has already done to build your faith, to remind you of God's faithfulness so that you can believe God in the situation you're in at the moment. So to remember what God has done in your life, remember how he saved you at this point out of this situation, out of that situation, how he came through for you at this point or at that point, how he provided your finances, how he healed your body, how he restored relationships, maybe with your spouse or your children or grandchildren. 
and to mark in your life. I encourage you even today, if this could be a little homework assignment for you, to take out a piece of paper and a pen and write down, and I know most people use computers and tablets and iPhones. Maybe that would work for you too. Make a note on your iPhone if you use your iPhone for making notes. But make a list of recalling times and places and incidents in your life in the past where God came through for you. Make a list. Make it a memorial list, a list of remembrance of what God has done for you. And then rejoice in him again for those things that he did. And then rejoice for what he is doing now in faith, believing God is working and doing the same thing for you again today and tomorrow and your future, just as he has done it in the past. Amen. So I encourage you to do that. Take 10 or 15 minutes. If you can take it on your lunch break or when you get home from work or if you work at home, if you have a, a 15 or 20 minutes, I think even 15 minutes would be sufficient to write down a list of things God has done to remind you of all the times God has come through for you and keep it as a remembrance for yourself forever and use it to share as a testimony with other people. Share it with your children. Remember, God told Israel to tell their children, tell your children about how God defeated the Egyptians, how God sent the plagues in Egypt, and then how God brought the people of Israel across the Dead Sea, uh, uh, the Red Sea, I mean, <laughs> excuse me, the Red Sea on dry ground and how God defeated the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. Tell your children about what God did for you months ago, last year, two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, and use it to tell other people and give testimonies of what God has done. Testimonies are supernatural. As a matter of fact, in the book of Revelation, it says that the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. So giving testimony of Jesus, and that is testifying to what he has done for you, is the spirit of prophecy. Especially when you get in the, when the anointing comes on you and you start testifying under anointing, that is powerful. And that is what is called the spirit of prophecy. That is in the book of Revelation. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. So you start testifying to what Jesus has done for you. It will build your faith. It will build your joy. It will encourage you. It will strengthen you. Hallelujah. And it will build your faith to believe God today for the things you are believing God for today. So again, Psalm 107, 22, let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Praise God. And Psalm 92, 4, you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. Rejoice in the Lord today because of the works that he has done. So first it was God himself, who he is. That you rejoice in God. He is your joy. And then you rejoice in his works and what he has done for you. And then let's go on to the next one. You rejoice in God's word. In God's word. Psalm 19 verse 8. Psalm 19 8 says. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart, the precepts of the Lord. That is the word of God. The precepts of the Lord, or you could say the word of God, are right, 
giving joy to the heart. If you need joy, you need to go to God's word. God's word gives joy to the heart, particularly the promises of God, of his provision and deliverance to you, his promises to you, his faithfulness to you. Hallelujah. So the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. God's word will give joy to your heart. If you need more joy, you need more word. If you need more joy, you need more word. And then Psalm 119 Verse 111. Now, something interesting about Psalm 119 is that almost every single verse, I think every verse except one, actually, that I have found or recognized, talks about God's word. It either calls it his laws or his statutes or his precepts or his commands or his decrees. But in every verse, it, there is reference to God's word. And it will say it in different terms, God's decrees, God's commands, God's precepts, his promises, his statutes. But you will see that mentioned in every verse. And I think every verse except one, which actually gave praise to his name. But in Psalm 119, verse 111, 111. It says, your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. Your statutes are my heritage. They are the joy of my heart. So Psalm 19, 8, the precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. And then Psalm 119, 111, your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joy of of my heart. God's word will be the joy of your heart. It will stir up joy. It will produce joy. It will feed joy. It will water joy. So if you need more joy, study God's word, read God's word. Glory. Hallelujah. And then let me name one more cause for joy. And actually we did already talk about it and that is faith and hope faith and hope now actually faith and hope are not the same faith produces hope faith is believing God and because you believe God you have hope what is hope hope is confident expectation that what God said is true and will come to pass. You are confidently expecting it to come to ca- pass because you have faith. So faith is believing God's word. Hope then is the expectation that you get because you believe. So your faith and hope are in God and in his word. Well, faith and hope will produce joy and joy is evidence that you have faith and that you have hope. Romans 15, 13, Romans 15, 13 says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Trusting in him is also believing So joy and peace as you trust two big signs when you are in faith, the God kind of faith are joy and peace. Let me add three an expectation. Hope is expectation. Hope is a result that you believe God. So because you believe God, you have expectation You have hope. And because you have hope, you have joy and peace. And peace 
as you trust in him, as you rest in him, having faith in God, you rest in him and you have peace. And we'll talk about peace then later as a fruit of the spirit. But peace is a result of faith or trust in God. You are resting in him and you have peace and you also have joy because you are expecting having hope expectation that what God said is true and is coming to pass. So may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so having hope for the future, hope is expectation of good. Let me say not just expectation because some people expect bad. Expecting bad is dread. It's called dread. Expecting something bad is called dread. But expecting good things to come to pass is the God kind of hope, confident expectation of the good things God has promised. So having hope for the future, as you think of God's promises coming to pass in your life, will bring joy to your heart. And God does have promises for good things in your future. Jeremiah 29, 11 Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the thoughts or the plans I have for you, says the Lord plans to give you hope and a future. Hallelujah. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. And another translation says plans for good plans for good. So God has good plans for you. All of his plans for you are good and they are to give you hope and a future or a future filled with hope. Another translation says a future filled with hope. So you have hope in the Lord for the good promises of God to come to pass. And when you have that hope and when you believe and have hope, there will, it will bring joy to your heart. So again, joy is evidence that you are in faith, believing God and confidently expecting good things to come to pass. Praise the Lord. Let me share with you one more scripture about faith and hope. Producing joy, faith and hope produce joy. First Peter one, first Peter one verses eight and nine. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him. Believing faith, faith is believing. You believe in him and are filled with. With an inexpressible and glorious joy, or King James, joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Another translation, inexpressible joy and glorious. Inexpressible joy and glorious joy. You are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Verse 9 For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Well, you're also receiving the joy of your faith for your, the healing of your body, for the finances uh, to be met and supplied and provided for your children to be saved and your grandchildren to be saved and your husband or your wife to be saved or to grow spiritually. You are receiving the goal of your faith. Let's read it again. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are 
filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Inexpressible and glorious joy for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So as you believe God today, you are receiving the goal of your faith. You are standing firm and having done all to stand, stand, and you are rejoicing in the Lord and you are rejoicing in his word and you are rejoicing in his works and the faithfulness that he has been to you in the past, how he did this for you and he did this for you and he did this for you. And now as you are standing firm today, you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy because you believe in him. You believe in him. You believe in his word. You believe he is, his word is true and he is bringing it to pass for you. You are believing you are receiving your healing, your finances, your marriage, your children, your work, all according to his promise. You're believing that it is being done for you and you are receiving the goal of your faith. So you rejoice in the Lord today. And again, I say it, rejoice. Now join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.